So the first speaker of the morning session is Pavel Wigman from University of Chicago. He is talking about integrable complexity. Yes. <clears throat> I'd like to tell you about my not new works uh, made uh, some years ago, actually pretty long ago, uh, with Anton Zabrodin and Sasha Abdullah. <laughs> Uh, so I make a kind of exception. I usually talk about my recent work, but this is not recent. Uh, a reason why I'm speaking about it is finally, at once, I see some people who still know what is better than that. The work has been done on the, at the time when the better than that have been forgotten. And, uh, but now there is kind of a small renaissance of the so of some people in the audience know what it means. So that's a story for it. Um, and uh, another issue, another reason is that uh, the subject, which is which is called Hofstadter butterfly, now became popular again in uh, mathematics, but in the very corner of mathematics, which is called spectral theory. And there are some prizes given to for proving certain theories. Uh, even the field medal has been given uh, to Avila for this subject. So maybe it's time for me to return to it and uh, present it to you. It's uh, one of the most beautiful problems which uh, I am aware of, and uh, its beauty is uh, demonstrated, could be demonstrated by the fact that the problem can be formulated within small short box. Uh, so what is written in the box is a uh, different equation. It's a linear operator acting on the uh, column size, subject uh, point uh, N, and uh, we're looking for the spectrum of the circuit. Spectrum is this. So what is here? So lambda is a parameter, which I will set to one the next slide. Uh, K is a parameter, phi is a parameter, phi is phi, uh, that's it. Um, so one um, may think about one dimensional chain and the free electron with wave function is psi, jumping from site n to n plus one to n minus one. And the subject of periodic potential is the period uh, one over five. Uh, if you want to continue limit and uh, say this net is this one is small and uh, assume that uh, it's not a lattice but uh, that is a second derivative and it becomes a Schrodinger equation in the periodic potential. Schrodinger equation in periodic potential is called the Messier equation and uh, this is discretized. And for that reason, it's called the sensation call it almost in its equation. So we want to solve this equation. So it's a discretization of the equation and uh, find the spectrum, which may depend on parameter of phi. There are other parameters, but it's a major. Uh, anyway, uh, so my goal is uh, to make story. It's a, as you will see, the story is pretty involved in complex. But still, I hope I will be able to deliver how to formulate the problem and what we are looking for, not how to solve it. It's a bit more involved. For that reason, I will appreciate comments of, uh, from the audience while I am speaking. So, 
when we come to the solution for a kind of quasi solution, it will be already too late. But uh, from the beginning, it's supposed to be too late. <coughs> Psi, it's a number, so you can yeah, yeah, point at it's a matrix. Do the brackets, do the brackets close the argument? Yeah, so the it's, a, it's an argument of psi. Yeah, yeah. So it's a linear equation. And it's actually, by, hmm? the multiplication of psi n is after the yes, this is a, of the both sides. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, we are talking about the diagonalization of a matrix yeah, yeah. with two, two adjacent diagonals yeah. and cosine periodic function sitting on the diagonal. Is k an integer or is it an arbitrary number? Huh? Uh, it's a periodic, it's inside cosine, so it's from zero to two pi. K is a real number. Yeah, a real number. So if you replace it by second derivative, it's a difference, but but if you replace it by second derivative, it's called less equation. Describe electron in a periodic potential. And this is a tight binding electron in a periodic potential. Yeah. Despite of its simplicity, it has uh, enormous applications in mathematics and physics. And for that reason, it has about a dozen names, they choose only a few. Sometimes it's from Carter equation, sometimes it's from a problem, and there's another dozen names. Depending on the subject, this equation appears. It appears mainly in uh, uh, one of the most popular and where uh, most people work with is the spectral theory. Um, so they want to know the spectral, spectral of this equation. But application is, of course, in physics in localization. That's a standard model for localization in electronic physics. It's a, not a random potential, it's a regular potential, but still the problem could be used as a case study for localization. Well, it's been used in the past. Well, uh, it's also quasi crystal, so it's one dimensional quasi crystal. Electron propagating in one dimensional quasi crystal. Uh, quasi because the period of this cosine may not be commensurate with the period of the lattice. The period of the lattice is one, but period of cosine is whatever, is phi, dependent on phi. So two incommensurate periods, one and two pi over, and one over phi. And uh, that situation is so called quasi pixel. Uh, well, there is an application in dynamical systems, uh, so the pretty standard quantum pool effect, and this is continuous. <coughs> okay. uh, uh, works on this problem, it's massive work, uh, and they uh, concentrated in time before 1990s, so that's the uh, names, and Phil uh, Safstadler, who did the to this problem his name, although he's by far not the first. And then uh, after 1990s, uh, um, that's, uh, I, I just use few names, for example, Judith Fagero for this. And uh, Svetlana Zetomirska recently got a Heinemann Prize in mathematical physics for proving some theorems, and uh, Avila uh, Fieldsmith. Uh, all the problems are related to this simple, simple, <coughs> super simple equation. Okay, so uh, uh, Kafstatter himself, Douglas Kafstatter uh, himself, uh, being a student, a PG student in, uh, uh, in Germany, in uh, Regensburg, um, using a primitive computer. Uh, draw his uh, butterfly. What is written? What is drawn here? It's a spectrum. This E plugged this vertical line plugged as 
a horizontal line is this parameter phi. Uh, I will call it flux. Typically, it's called flux. Of course, because you use computer, you choose flux to be a ratio number. You divide it by Q, two ratio number, two, two integers, uh, with some ratio numbers. Otherwise, uh, computer does not know what to do. Uh, and uh, the point we share is uh, appears. Uh, let me explain what is drawn on this picture. <clears throat> so the blue line, well, uh, well, it's a um, it's a flat cap problem. Um, linear operator with uh, periodic uh, periodic linear operator. So the spectrum uh, is a, con a collection of bands and gaps. Uh, so bands means when E is real, gaps is where E is not real. And, uh, and E depends on K. K is a kind of momentum, E is energy. But for given K, E consists of a collection of uh, bands and gaps. And those bands and gaps are drawn by blue, blue color. So, for example, if the flux is one half, is this is one half, P is one, P is two, then there are two bands, that band and that band, they touch each other. Like this can be done. But if uh, it is one and three, there are three bands. Uh, it's probably this one, this. Ah, there are three bands. Uh, then this is one four, one band, another band, another band, another band. Anyway, the number of bands is skew. So, for example, if it is one third, flux one third, then we have three bands which I couldn't find. So, three blue lines. But uh, if the flux is close to one third. It's like that, very close to this. Then the number of bands is three times 137 plus one. Right? So the problem is definitely voluntary states. So small number, small change in phi, in this phi, from one three to almost one three, create incredible number of gaps out of three gaps. And that's what is written here. Yeah. 1976. Um, I was on the conference for his 70 something birthday, right, maybe, and uh, he presented uh, his original computer, which he used. It's a kind of a big device. Yes, yes, he chose uh, samples of rational values. This is what this is what happens. Three bits become exploding. Yeah. But but this, that's my story. This is my story about it. So let me come back to the question when we uh, when I when I present. So there are simple so there are a few simple facts about uh, this general facts about this problem is that uh, first of all you can put it on a chain and uh, impose uh, quasi periodic boundary conditions, then there is another parameter k prime. So the spectrum will be function of k and k prime to momentum. That's called Brillion zone. And this k and k prime comes symmetrically with respect to change lambda to lambda minus one. Uh, and this is called uh, symmetry of Andrea Fabri. It's pretty elementary, but uh, Okay. Mm. 
Yes, so the system size is actually Q because otherwise, as other speakers, mm -hmm. so the system size. Is uh, but uh, it's a question. Okay. Uh, and uh, for sure, to call it butterfly, he thought that there are butterflies, not the whole thing, but many butterflies flying to infinity. Uh, this picture changed his life yes, by his own words. That was the only science paper which he published. And then he started to write uh, books about philosophy of science, very popular, because it's a very popular author. One of them, everybody knows, it's called Escher Jürgenbach. It's interesting. Uh, when I myself saw it being uh, also students, I also was uh, pretty much impressed. Uh, what all this mean? And why such a simple line produce incredibly complicated, but not random, but rather structured pattern? And what this pattern means? Uh, this I don't know. Actually, it's a good point, but I don't know. But I don't know. I explain. I explain. I know. I know. So nowadays it becomes part of art, uh, and uh, so people color it. Uh, you can see this picture. It's uh, the picture uh, drawn by, uh, colored by Yusuf Avron, who contributed to the problem a lot. Um, and uh, I heard that nowadays you can order rough with this pattern because computer like it. It's very easy to program computer, so to produce this stuff. Um, so there is commercial, uh, of commercial applications. Um, okay. A uh, few elementary properties of this uh, problem. Uh, elementary in the sense that there is a physics consensus, but not easy to prove this first one. It's uh, I didn't draw it. I didn't draw this equation here on this page. But let me recall parameters. So this is lambda. It's a parameter in front of cosine. The spectrum is very sensitive to this lambda. And if lambda is positive, the spectrum <clears throat> can consist from points. It is just point set. Um, allowed energy are just points. So it's uh, from physical point of view, it's kind of um, insulator and all bands reduce to after. Uh, Okay, there are bands and gaps, but let's consider the case that phi is irrational, namely P and Q both goes to infinity. But uh, the ratio is, for example, square root of five minus one divided by two, golden mean. Okay? It's a, a simple irrational number. Uh, and then what happened to the spectrum? Then suddenly gaps close up to points and all bands uh, reduce, so bands reduce to points. This is called Anderson localization. So the system, instead of a method, it can be if, if lambda less than one, uh, the spectrum consists of infinitely many bands and it becomes it's a metal. It's called absolutely continuous spectrum. And the total bandwidth is different between lambda and lambda. But the most interesting case, and this is what I Focus on is when lambda equal one, then the spectrum becomes precious, becomes what mathematicians called counter type set. Uh, I, I will not be able to give you a definition of the counter type set. The definition is quarter over pages of over page, uh, but uh, we have an idea of what counter sets are. But that counter set so peculiar that people who create counter set algorithmically like Sierpinski set infinitely yes. cut away from complexity and structure richness of the spectrum with this simple equation produced. That spectrum is called singular continuum and uh, it's one of the major examples of singular continuous spectrum and uh, definition of singular continuum it's it's uncountable set without isolated points 
but with measure zero. It's uh, neither metal nor it's a uh, so that's happened to all the four uh, Some of these things has been proven rigorously, and that's a, a recent highlight in analysis. And probably this point is some of like has been rigorously proven. Okay. Last phrase. Uh -huh. Uncountable set. It's an allowed spectrum. It's a energies. But this set has no isolated points. So there's no ends. And it's measure zero. A repeat measure of the set is zero. So the measure actually, the width of the bandwidth, it's a lambda minus one, the lambda goes to one. It's zero. This is actually a result of Taurus. The result is from the So it's like irrational numbers, but more structural. Like rational numbers, sorry, rational numbers, measure of rational numbers is zero, but much more complex than rational numbers. And they're countable, and this is uncountable. So it's sort of it's sort of between rational numbers and irrational numbers, some. Set. Uh, it's called kind of type types uh, set, which doesn't mean much. Okay. Now, uh, uh, that is not analysis. Now, uh, the point which I uh, which we found, and this is my subject of the talk, that that problem is actually solvable. Integrable and solved by beta results. So this structural set and pictures is subject of beta results. This is my message. Uh, more accurately, I try to propagate this message. Okay, more accurately, the message is that uh, this picture which you see, oh, sorry, this picture which we see which appears here, is actually depicting highest weights of cyclic representation of SL to Q, quantum, uh, quantum group SL to Q. The Q is a parameter related to the period of the weights. So the problem of drawing this is actually subject of representation, not analysis. Uh, and I, unfortunately, I was not able to propagate this message through mathematical community, people who did analysis, but cannot think about the presentation theory, but that's a story about the presentation theory. Okay. Now, <clears throat> viewing such picture, we have to, uh, uh, well, uh, it's aesthetic reaction, but now what questions as a, as a Okay, what questions do we want to ask and, uh, and answer? How to formulate the question? And uh, that is a slide which I try to answer that. Uh, so what do we want to know except of uh, enjoying uh, uh, this uh, water plate flying through it in all directions? Uh, we want to know the point. And this is called scaling hypothesis or hierarchy of three. Uh, let me choose some uh, period, which is irrational number. That's one of the symbols. Uh, it's a continuous fraction with period three, one, three. And then I uh, consider, of course, because it's uh, U is infinity, irrational number, I will have infinitely many gaps. They will draw infinitely many. Bands, infinitely many gaps. Okay. But let's consider a set of sequence of rational number which converge in some sense to this irrational number. Uh, the sequence could be very could be rather complicated, but for that one, it's pretty simple. It's a continuum fraction one 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 one. So we just cut them up by levels, and uh, it produces approximation. For more for more irrational number, it's much more complicated sequence. But for this one, it's consider this sequence. Have a 
the, this parameter you see the, the length of the period of the development of the You seem to suggest that when you write the irrational number as a continuous fraction and you look at how long is the period, yes. There is a structure. Yes, that's a major question. Yeah, that's no, I can't explain. Uh, 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 I'll try to explain, but in the end of the talk, which I probably will not be able to finish. Uh, but it's in one of the slides. There are 29 cells. Okay. But assume that this sequence exists, and I don't say how to construct it. Okay, and uh, then uh, we may start from say one half, which is one band, uh, and then symmetric. Spectrum is symmetric. This part is must be reflected. You know, it's symmetric with step length and positive energy negative. So, so suppose we said this uh, uh, one band, and the next next, if I increase the denominator, will be two bands, three bands, four bands, and so on and so on. So this level I called, uh, let me, uh, this sequence I called generation. So the most ancient generation starting from Adam and then uh, his son Seth, and then maybe us somewhere here. Uh, so, and it's keep growing. So then I choose on this pattern as some passes, some passes, which going to infinity. And on this process, I compute energies along this process, this number, this number, this number, this number. And then ask, show me the pass where the energies converge to not oscillate up and down, up and down, but converge smoothly to some limit with accuracy, one of the denominator, number of gaps. To some power. Okay. First of all, it's not clear whether it's possible, but numerics shows and better than that shows that it is possible. So better than that provides the guidance how to construct this approximation to this number, how to choose these passes such that energy on these passes converge to some number with this accuracy. Characterized by numbers, by numbers epsilon, which are called uh, which we call critical exponents, and therefore each pass, each pass has a passport critical exponent. Right? So when I see them in this picture, I must think about hidden passes and set of infinite number of numbers which are critical exponents. That's a question which we want to ask. Once we know these critical exponents, we can compute conductivity, phonon spectrum, whatever, all physical quantity. It's not easy, but it's that's a full characterization. So, infinite number of dimensions that is called a, a hierarchical tree. It's a hypothesis, but not proven, but uh, there's uh, enough data to believe that it's true. Right. So passes themselves possess a lot of information. They determine the topology of this complicated set. And um, so dimensions describe uh, it's a quantitative description of this topology. Are those QJs are they going to infinity? Yes, it's QJs are going to infinity. For example, uh, let's take this number, right? Q is infinity, right? Square root of 13, it's a p divided by q, both are infinity. So there is a pass to a sequence of rational numbers which approach to approach to, to this square root of 13, sequence approach. And within this sequence, there are many on each rational number, there are many numbers, which is a spectrum. And among the spectrum, there are interesting passes. Which kind of converge? So you say bounded, but it doesn't go converge to zero. Lower, it's a converge. It's a, it's a it means converge. So look, look. The approach to in the box is bounded, but does not converge to zero. 
I think that the sentence explains the field that's important. It's still telling that. Yeah, the difference. Uh, yeah. Yeah. On every approximation, the difference between true energy in the very end and on the rational number which approximated, not more than uh, one over Q squared corrected by some interesting number. And I show you some numbers. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, I don't, uh, I don't default this, what I wrote. I mean, this, 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 this EJ does not converge to zero. It, 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 it doesn't converge to zero, it converges to something else. It's uh, yeah, I don't really know what uh, it's called. But uh, the formula says by itself. It is more than no, no, no. So J could be could be a very small number. Two is a kind of uh, semi-classical dimension, classical dimension, kind of one down series. But that is a normalist dimension, small correction. Altogether is close to two. But two will be deviated. Okay. Okay. So this is a three. The only tree is no computer, so we have algorithm to compute this tree. And the only tree is known is uh, for Fibonacci, uh, for golden mean. That's a uh, drawing of the tree. And the only two epsilon is known numerically. It's one for the the most upper uppermost path on this line and the middle path. And other numbers, that's uh, that's example of principal dimension. The other numbers are not known even for that simple case. Although the whole of the set is known. Now, so now let me. Uh, okay, since I definitely will not be able to tell you the whole story, I would like to jump to the result, and then I come back to the introduction. Uh, um, result is the problem. So you want to solve this equation in the box. Um, well, energy, this energy depends on momentum, but let's choose momentum in the middle of the bed. bed. It's an example. Then it's a set of numbers. Okay, no patience. Let's hold Q e to the i pi phi, phi is a period or inverse period. That's a name. name. Phi is a ratio, ratio of two integers, P and Q. Okay. Then those numbers are sum of certain complex numbers, they're real, but it's a sum of complex numbers. How many of these numbers? As many as denominator. And those numbers obey the better the situation in that box. So we want to solve this algebraic set of equations. It has many solutions. Find one solution, sum of all of them. That's spec energy. Find another solution, many solutions. Sum of them, another point of the spectrum, and so on. That's, uh, uh, you know, the problem which A is able to formulate it in this simple box must have an answer which formulated in another simple box. Is this a theorem or what? It's algebra, so it's derivable. I don't know how you call it. But you, it's a <laughs> yeah. No, no, you know, it's a full spectrum. You know, it's a full yes, absolutely, you know, it's full spectrum. Moreover, moreover. And do we work for that nature of class? Yes, 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 it could be, uh, okay. Uh, it could be generalized for arbitrary k and arbitrary lambda, but then box will be all longer and involve set of functions, arithmetic uh, dialogarism and stuff. Uh, but uh, to, for simplicity, I think it's okay. 
Now, we know this equation. It's a very familiar equation. And it's actually a Heisenberg X and Z chain. But only, but this chain with a large spin, spin is key. And, but number of sides is two. So it's a two spins sitting, it's a chain with two sides, but very big spin. And they interact uh, through the way to make it solvable. And that's what this problem is equivalent. Usually, better than that equation, those people who are familiar with that equation know that here, this object raised to the power n, where n is the number of sides. And this is this number is large. But here it's small, it's small, but the spin goes to it. Right? And instead of boring circular dynamics, which long spin chain produce, instead we have a thermodynamic limit, instead we have a much more interesting, complicated structural set. When spin goes to infinity, but number of sides finite. In this case, it's even two. Okay. Now, uh, let me now come to, uh, so the question, basically the question of which is unsolved is how to solve this problem, how to solve this equation and not only solve it, it's not interesting to solve it, it's interesting to analyze it in the limit when Q becomes uh, power root of unity, but with a large root, right? And uh, there is some progress in this uh, way, but it's not complete. <laughs> now, uh, let me come to the introductory point and uh, I told you how to wait, the way to think about the problem. So suppose I have a square lattice and the uh, electron now jump from one point to another point, horizontally or vertically on a square lattice. Uh, and, but through every plaquette of this lattice, there is a magnetic flux phi. Okay. Then the Hamiltonian of this problem is consists of some of translations, left, right, up, down. But those translation in this presence of this phi form Heisenberg algebra, which is sometimes called magnetic translation. Okay. Uh, if I choose Landau gauge, it's a problem in magnetic field, type binding model in magnetic field. Choose my Landau gauge, particular gauge. Um, Schrodinger equation for the simple Hamiltonian becomes almost Matthew equation. And this is the way how we think about the problem. It's a simply type binding model of electrons in magnetic field. Okay. Uh, this is the magnetic field characterized by chair numbers. And uh, there are many bands. And if I find wave function for each band, I can compute the chair number. And this chair number is called full conductance. They are easy complicated. Uh, they solved uh, the solution of so-called Diophantine equation on to Tauris. Uh, it's the integer numbers which are made in synthesis of equations. And for example, if Q and Q415, that's a sequence of all conductance which corresponds to every band. Uh, and they are pretty random. If a speed Q is large, you can uh, encode credit cards by these numbers. But it's whole conductance is a integer that jumps up and down, as you can see. As you can see. So the question, the interesting story is that this data in that equation knows about whole conductances. Whole conductances. So it's a Q is 15, so there are 14 bands, so there's 14 numbers, but, uh, and then they repeat itself. Right, but uh, 14 yeah. numbers, and they are symmetric. So yeah. it's yeah. from uh, yeah. this part equal yeah. to that part because the spectrum is symmetric. Yeah, looks like they uh, might have been the last Yeah, minus seven, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they must be symmetric. No, that's the last one. The four, the first last one. Yeah, probably it must be. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's quite spectacular to see how this algebraic equation knows about algebraic geometry because when computing chunk numbers, it's an issue for algebraic geometry. Right? They can be recovered from. Uh, those who know better than Spokai model may uh, recognize this whole conductance. They are sometimes called Takakashi, um, Takakashi Suzuki numbers. And they are related to strings, to the size of the strings allowed in the Heisenberg chain. This is these numbers. But in this language, they become simple topological numbers uh, related to the, uh, the fiber bundle. Based on this dense Okay. Um, now, once you have these numbers, you may construct the wave function. The wave function solution, you know, not on all the eigenvalues, but they also eigenstates. And those are polynomials whose roots are this interesting numbers. Uh, if I construct this polynomial, in order to recompute psi n in the original equation, uh, it's a linear combination of this polynomial with the coefficients which are known as quantum diagonals. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, so two issues, how to derive this equation, how to solve this equation. Number one is to derive this equation, and then that's easy. To solve this equation is more difficult, and so then this equation is difficult. Okay. Uh, let me show you a trick how to derive this equation. It's, I hide the essence, but show the um, So the problem could be formulated because it's a particle in magnetic field, the problem could, could be formulated in different gauge. Original equation so nicely looking written in Landau gauge. But there are many other gauge. They don't change the spectrum, but change the equations. It's either spectrum deformation. It's called. Okay. So there is a so-called chiral gauge, which is now very popular. We found it uh, years ago, but now mathematicians start to recognize it, which um, uh, produce the same equation with, in, but now in this form. Uh, advantage of this form is that if you assume that this psi is a polynomial, substitute in, eventually all solutions of this equation are polynomials. Once they are polynomials, they characterized by roots, and the uh, roots are based on the, that system. So the issue is how, how it happened that there is such gauge when solutions are polynomials. And it's happened for a point reason. Uh, let me briefly recall a story which is called algebraization. Uh, of spectral algebraization and representation theory. I do it on a very simple example. Uh, very simple example. Let's consider one dimensional Schrodinger type of equation, second order differential equation, and we want to find the spectrum. Right? So A of Z is some function, B of Z is some function, C is some function, third day of the second day of the second day. Question. Under which condition solutions of this equation, some solutions of these equations are polynomials? And you know that happened. It is under polynomials, you know, big and bower polynomials. So, what are the conditions for A, B, and C such that psi is polynomials? And the answer is the following. That's a problem that's called algebraization of this. The answer is the following. Consider <coughs> Um, a group SL2 and uh, finite dimensional representation of SL2. Three operators is Z, as X, as Y, and as plus as minus. So, textbook says that they could be represented by differential operators. And J is an uh, integer top integer, and uh, these operators form what SL2 be algebra. 
Não, precisa que não olhe a Hamiltonian, which is by linear form of this uh, operator. Because it's a finite dimension representation characterized by spin j, pi square j, that's a matrix. Or in other language, all solutions are polynomials because it's finite dimensional. Because I start from finite dimensional representation, right? So any alphas and betas provides polynomials. And uh, right, so we substitute, find this uh, full set of uh, A, B, C. Uh, of course, it's not a full spectrum. Uh, there is some, but but it's normalized. Okay. Yes, but now we have a different equation. So let's consider a different equation. Then instead of derivative, we have a shift u by q. In the current shift, so we have function a, d, v. Find those functions when the different equations produce polynomials. The answer is instead of SL2, consider quantum group. Uh, I mean, sorry, deformation of SL2 by parameter q by this shift. Uh, what that means is that instead of uh, operators one as plus as minus as three. We consider different operators, which is deformed by those are deformed by Q. We call them A, B, C, D. Uh, and uh, instead of free algebra, there is a set of uh, set of computation uh, relations, set of relations for those different things. Those are called uh, sometimes quantum group or universal deformation of uh, SL2 with many different names. The reason for that. That this A, B, C, D form R matrix, universal, universal R matrix, which obey the box type. Okay. Now, discover that Hofstadter problem particle on a lattice, dimensional lattice in magnetic field, such that its uh, translations left, right, up, down, obey Heisenberg algebra. Embedded to SL2. So it's actually equal to B plus C. That's what happened. And then we guarantee the solution time. So thinking about this butterfly or differential equations, finding the spectrum, the difference between finding the spectrum, B. Essentially, doing representation theory without knowing it. But once you know, this is uh, not correct. Uh, uh, so, once differential equations are written, you can write equations for the roots. And then, now the problem is how to find these roots. On the condition that this number q goes to infinity. So small q is the root of unity, but this root of unity is large. Okay. Now it so happens that solution of this equation consists of what you get as the form strings. Strings are position of the z, which are equidistant along the uh, um, along the Along the circle and form some um, cluster, uh, form some cluster. I don't have time to discuss it. Those who know strings in X, X, Z, K knows what I'm talking about. Those who don't, I don't have you know, way to explain it. But they kind of clustering. And uh, uh, on this picture, you see numerics solving these equations for plus 34, 55. There are 50, 54 points here. And uh, Boxes are predictions and process are numerics. So they remarkably fit each other. Uh, yeah, and uh, um, uh, but moreover, uh, 
um, they fit each other in an interesting manner. So if, uh, if uh, this is last thing we had in the city, if you take and let's say this number, large number, that means 54 bands, 54 points, 54 solutions, and you know, there's 54 roots, and uh, go to it as a sequence, and it creates a sequence. Along, it, along this hierarchical tree, on the first generation, you have only two roots, second generation, three roots. So, uh, uh, what is remarkable about it is those rules which I found on this, this points are solution of this equation, or better than this equation. Those points which I found for early generation when there's only two points, uh, they kind of, maybe I start from this three. They move to the next generation, the S3, but some new edit. Then we go along, next step, those which found stay there, but new edit. And then this way we can construct. So kind of parents reduce next generation, but their heritage remain and next generation remember their parents and so on and so on. And eventually get a picture, picture, but the species captured by analyzing those streams. And then you can think of the wave functions and all this stuff. That's example. So what is the problem? The problem is that the main problem. The problem is that position of the strings is approximate. Very, very nice, very close to numerical values, but still approximate. And this error does not allow no corrections to the strings. Position is the main, main position, I know, but then some still corrections. And the most interesting part is hidden there, and that has not been understood. So it is within this equation. So the major kind of approximate solution we already know. So it is here, it's very well structured. It gives topology of the Kashlatter Butter plan, but not the numbers. Numbers are corrections to this, to the, basically the difference between position center of the box and the numerical data. So it's a bit shifted, and the crystal dimensions are there, hidden in this next direction. It's a sort of finite size correction in the XFZ chain. So no kind of main thing, mean, but not finite size corrections. Oh, no, no, it's approximate solution. It which becomes a good solution, better and better when two goes to infinity. But on the way, there is some error, which is right. And the most interesting information that's hidden in the yeah, exactly, exactly. Things are not perfect. It's not perfect. Absolutely. 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 But here, instead of finite size, size is finite, but spin is large. Right? So it's a different parameter to go to infinity. So if you right? think about this cube of infinity as it's semi no, 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 it's not semi, it's a super quantum limit. Uh, let me explain. Let, let, let me explain. It's a good point, so I, I explain. <clears throat> so this flux is uh, here over here. Right? Classical limit, semi classical limit is when P is constant, fixed, constant, say one, but Q goes to infinity. That's a must And yeah, this is perfectly analyzed. Without data, that's uh, it's a, a semi classic, so this kind of thing. But super classical limit, quantum limit, is both those things. 
the ratio is different story. And uh, uh, looking for Hofstadter, I, I can show you this uh, Looking for Hofstadter picture. Yes, semi classical limit is these states, how they go to infinity. So the envelope is pretty easy to understand, but the structure inside not. Well, let us do 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. Because we have 15 minutes. 